Okay, so I'm wiring up the uh, motor to the starter and then I'm gonna wire the starter to the plug or to the wall. So uh, yeah, I'm using BX cable and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the, the length I need to go inside that box. And when you use BX, you gotta put a protective sleeve here so uh, the aluminum sheeting here, the shielding doesn't uh, it doesn't cut into the connectors by vibrating or whatever so you got to use little plastic sleeve but the place I go they don't sell the right one they don't sell the the ones that are big enough for that cable so I'm gonna use two or three and uh, protect it somewhat uh, before uh, before I can use it uh, I'll probably end up replacing these with a proper one but I gotta hit the store that is only open on a uh, on weekdays so uh, in the meantime I'll uh, I'll do it with that that allow me for uh, for setting up the whole thing, the uh, the belt tension and all that stuff, and then I can just replace them with the with the right ones. But for now, I'm gonna put uh, two or three ones, and uh, make sure it uh, it all works together, and uh, it'll uh, protect uh, protect the thing just fine. In the meantime, but just uh, be aware of that. You need uh, you need a little uh, that little thing in there. So there it is. I put two of these and uh, one is uh, 180 degree from the other one and uh, it protects it really nicely. So uh, I'll go with that. That's one way to cut it with a grinder. Uh, you could use a shear but it, it compresses the, the sleeve here and uh, yeah that's, uh, that's what I got. I don't, I'm not gonna buy a shear just to do that, just gonna cut it with a grinder and you can tell it's, uh, it cuts really nice and uh, doesn't do any damage to it. Okay, we gotta keep in mind that uh, this is a three-phase contactor and um, because the a single-phase contactor of 50 amp, so for that big a motor, this is a 10 horse, remember, so uh, it's gonna run you a lot of money because it's not common. Uh, industries, they don't use that. They use uh, a 10 hours, they use a three phase. This is a three phase, but for a 30 horsepower engine uh, motor, not engine, motor. And um, yeah, so it's more common. So what we have to do here is we have three poles and in order for the overload here to work at the specified uh, amp here, uh, we gotta reuse those three poles. What are, how, how are we gonna use this? with only two wires is we're gonna run one twice and yes it's gonna work it's not gonna the length of wire is not gonna matter so what we'll do uh, the black here is gonna connect to the middle one here uh, you could go a different way but uh, what we're gonna do I'm gonna use those two here it's just a matter of uh, routing the wires inside that box that box is, is too small usually bigger for a uh, uh, that size contactor, uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's just a matter of finding a good route for the, for the loop back wire. What I'm gonna do is gonna exit here. Mm, let's say we uh, we go to these two here on top with my power wires. Uh, I'm gonna go down here. From here, I'm gonna take that guy here, loop it up, and go to the middle. And from the middle here, I'm connecting the black here, and gonna go to my motor. That's the plan here. I'll connect this guy here and uh, then uh, take a piece of wire, do the loop back. Okay, there I put my ground and uh, the first the first block, I got two blocks like this. I'm gonna use one for uh, motor side and the other one for uh, for uh, the mains and yeah you could do away with the white wire just that I paid for it so I'm gonna hook it up as a uh, secondary ground so uh, it's it's more than adequately uh, wired so uh, the white would be enough the uh, bare would be enough but I put both of them because I got them and they fit in the lug so uh, why not so that's the uh, that's the eye side for the motor and now I gotta do the other one which is the wire going to uh, the wall there you go so that's the uh, run down 
black goes here, down, loops around here, down to the uh, black of the wa of the motor, and uh, the red goes straight down, and yeah, that loop back is necessary because we again we're using a three phase uh, compactor and overload. So uh, now all I have to do is uh, wire these uh, these two grounds, same way I did here. And it will be done for the uh, high power side of that thing. Then we'll have to wire in the uh, the power for the contactor in here and uh, the pressure switch. Okay, I got my um, my pressure switch grounded here and goes to the switch here, grounds the body. Fine. Um, then this guy here is the coil, which is a it's just just a big electromagnet that pulls the contactor. So uh, it's, it's AC, so you could uh, put a, wire, a live wire here all all the time, a hot between those two. And then when you ground that pin, it's the other one right there, then the uh, compressor is going to turn on. Or you could ground that guy here or that one anyway, it doesn't matter. Or you could you could ground that one send a power wire through the switch back through the thing and activate it so you'd think because it's ac it's going to be the same thing but it's not the same thing in case of failure for instance if i power alive here and use a ground send a ground there which is disconnected and then when when it turns on it connects ground close the circuit and turns the uh pressure switch on uh the thing is if i have to crush that cable here it's gonna be there's a ground in there, so it's gonna cause a grounding uh, grounding issue, and the compressor will never stop. So what I'll do is I'm gonna send a uh, a live to it. That's why I taped it up. So I'm gonna send a live to it and back. So if I uh, crush this cable for some reason, if that wire gets crushed, uh, it's gonna ground the thing and it's gonna pop the breaker instead of uh, turning that pump full on forever and. Uh, break something so that's the uh, that's the reasoning between uh, switching the ground or switching a live wire in this case I'm switching the, I'm switching the power so what I'll do here I got my wire here and there I'm gonna ground that baby in that lug there's a there's a spot left so uh, yeah this one's gonna be grounded all the time then I'll uh, I'll use this guy here to go here with that guy because I need uh, 120 volt. You can you can see 120 volt. So you only you only need one leg in the ground, and so this will go there. And the black in here is a return. It's gonna go to that other pole, and I'll be that. Okay, so now wiring the uh, the motor. I know that line one goes to P1. Then I tape P2 and P8. And line 2 goes to T4 and T5. But the thing is, if I need to uh, switch the rotation, I switch T8 and T5. Yeah, T5 and T8. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's not really a good way to know which... Uh, from the get-go, knowing which way is going to turn. So you just, just wire it up, start it, and uh, then you know which way it's been. And uh, change it if you need to. So here I put my crowns. I had to put a larger, uh, well not a larger, but a, uh, a longer bolt, so I could put both my ground there, and then I wired it just like uh, just like the thing here.